The insert isoparm command is a way for you to, as the name suggests, add an isoparm onto an existing NURB surface. Let me start off by creating a NURB surface to which we can add some isoparms. So here we go, nice NURB cylinder. And it's very easy to use. Uh, let me go ahead and call up the, uh, the operation, insert isoparms. So we'll go ahead and bring up its options. Let me reset everything. And let's grab any isoparm we want on the surface, and let's drag out a new selection. If you didn't know you could do this, of course, by now you should, of course. We can uh, select any isoparm and then, of course, drag out to any location on the surface as a marker. And then if I just click Apply, we get a new isoparm right at that location. So that's probably the easiest way to look at this tool and probably one of the most common uh, methods in which it'll be, it'll be used. Now, we have two different insert location methods. We have at selection or between selections. At selection, you just saw. We select a specific spot on the surface, click Apply, and we get an isoparm right at that location. Between sections is a little different because we can either choose a couple of isoparms like so and click apply. And you'll notice because our number of isoparms to insert is set to one, we end up with one isoparm right in between these two, or in this case at the halfway point of the surface. We could grab markers like so by holding the shift key and click apply. And now we get not only isoparms at those markers, but we get one inserted in between as well. It's pretty interesting. Or we don't even have to select isoparms at all. We can tell Maya to use all surface isoparms in U, which will simply just put a, a new isoparm in between all existing isoparms in the U direction. Or we can do the same thing in V, where Maya will put new isoparms in between all of the isoparms in the V direction. Notice how it skips this one here on the end. Kind of an interesting little side feature. So very cool. We can also keep original with this. And if I uh, switch on at selection, and notice my multiplicity is currently just set to one, we keep the original surface. Let's go ahead and grab a selection where we can add an isoparm, like so. And we'll scoot this off to the side. Because I have kept uh, the original, I now have some surface history where I can grab the show manipulator tool. And I can slide on the surface where exactly I want that isoparm to go. You can also change the parameter value here inside the, uh, the node to maybe something like 0.5 or 0.9. Give it exact locations. So however you want to handle that. You can also change the direction if you want this to be in V as opposed to U. It's very cool stuff. Now from here, we can also take a look at multiplicity for these isoparms, which is very similar to multiplicity for knots. In fact, the two are analogous. Uh, let's go ahead and grab an isoparm, say here. And right now, of course, we have multiplicity set to increase by as opposed to set to a specific value. Think of this like absolute and relative. Set will uh, add a given number, whatever you have set inside of multiplicity. And increase by will add the multiplicity number to whatever happens to be there. So let's start off. We'll grab an isoparm up here, and we'll change this to set to. And let's set this to 3 so we can get a nice sharp corner. And we'll click, oh, let's switch off Keep Original. We don't need that. We'll click Apply. Now let's grab holes on the surface. And I can scale these in. And just to make the surface look a little nicer, I'm going to divert for just a moment. We'll come over to our, uh, our Attribute Editor. And under the Shape node, I'll come down to uh, NURB Surface Display, grab Curve Precision Shaded, and increase that all the way up. So just this looks nice and neat. And you can see we have a razor sharp corner here because we have a, an isoparm with a multiplicity of three right here in this location. Now what I can also do is grab an isoparm, say here, and let's put our set to back down to one. Let's click apply. And now if I grab a hole here, notice we don't have that sharpening. We have a, a nice smooth uh, transition as we uh, move down. But what if I wanted that to be a hard uh, surface? I can come back in here, grab this isoparm, and now we can set this to increase by. And we'll increase this by 2 so that we end up with a total multiplicity of 3. Also notice the surface did not change. It's very important to, to be aware of that. Adding isoparms will not change the shape of the surface. But now if I grab this new hull and I scale in, maybe move up a little bit, you'll notice that we now have a razor sharp edge right there because we have a three multiplicity on that one isoparm. It's actually three isoparms stacked in one location. So that's really all there is to it. It all depends on whether or not you need creasing on your surface, or maybe you just need more detail in a given area. 
And that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.